Daniel chapter 7 and we are going to continue from where we stopped last week I don't know how many of you feel blessed to study this book but personally I am seeing so much of promise and hope and personal blessing in my life ever since I started teaching on this book the book of Daniel it's a, it's amazing what the lord is doing that every single thing that he is doing is for his glory and i am so grateful that he has given us the grace to start the teaching to begin with i was a little overwhelmed by this book because it is an entire two semester or sometimes three semester course in a bible college the lord has helped us to start it and i believe he'll give us the grace to finish it also hallelujah Daniel chapter 7 please <coughs> In verse 8 I considered the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn Please mark that phrase little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things now this little horn that we are looking at is a specific specific declaration of the nature in which the antichrist will be mark it down that he had eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things so the little horn is just a phrase to show us it's a different man altogether eyes denotes human intelligence and genius mouth speaking great things means blasphemy he will be blaspheming god speaking against god now in verse 9 we see the third vision starts that's why earlier in chapter 7 verse 1 we read about how he had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed in verse 9 it says i beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire now from verse 9 we are seeing a different vision starting it is not a continuation of verse 8 why because the entire scenario changes or shifts to heaven Till now Daniel is looking at things that are happening on the earth. Now the entire scene shifts to heaven. And there he sees till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit. Now everything he is talking about in verse 9 is found described again in Revelation chapter 4 and chapters 5. Let's just see it briefly. Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5 is talking about a scene in heaven. In fact from chapter 1 till chapter 3 you find God is addressing a prophecy to the various kinds of churches. But all of a sudden in chapter 4 and chapter 5 there looks like something different is suddenly spoken and it is different because it is a scene in heaven after this i looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which i heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and i will show thee things which must be hereafter 
And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. Now this is what Daniel is talking about. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. Again chapter 5 verse 1. And I sat and I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side. Sealed with seven seals. So it's very clear that this scene is describing heaven. What is it describing? It is the preparation for the judgment of on the ones who are going to go through what is called the great tribulation period. Please write it with capital letters if you are writing down notes. The great tribulation is a specific word denoting a specific time frame. Although you and I may go through tribulation in the time we are living in, it is nothing in comparison to what will happen during the great tribulation period it's going to be a time of great bloodshed it's going to be a time of great deception it will be a time where there will be much lies perpetrated in fact if you read something about the end times in the scriptures you will find it will be a time when there will be so much of insecurity women cannot move around in the world and expect justice and righteousness to keep them. It's going to be a time of great immorality. It's going to be a time of great breaking down of the law. The laws of God. Because it will be a time in which the Antichrist who rules and reigns on this earth will practice great deception. It's going to be a very horrible time. And it's going to be a time of great acceleration of hopelessness in the hearts of people. People will wish to die, the scripture tells us, but they will not find death. Just imagine, it's a horrible thing. You want to die, you're ready to die, you're ready to commit suicide. But then what happens is, death leaves you. Well, verse 9 talks about who is in charge during this time. He is called the ancient of days. Hallelujah. Love that phrase that describes God Almighty. It's talking about Him as eternal in nature. He's the ancient of days. We can only measure time for so much and no more. I don't know how many of you looked at the paper this morning. In the newspapers, they had given a small article of how some Chinese scientists have found out that man originated not from ape, but from fish. Well, that itself looks like a miracle to me if you ask me. Because from fish, if somebody starts speaking a little later, there must be somebody on high who could make it possible. But it's something that is just constantly putting a mockery to the wisdom of men. That's why the Bible tells us the wisdom of men is foolishness in the sight of God. It's foolishness. And until a man comes and humbles himself and says, Lord, I need you. Give me your wisdom. The foolishness of man will continually make him, you know, come to a place where he is not able to see the goodness of God. He is not able to see the greatness of God. Nor is he able to see the door which has been opened into heaven. He will always come to a place where his foolishness will come out. And people will laugh at him. Years ago, people spent so much of money just to find out whether there was life on Mars and Jupiter. I had a preacher one time talk about it. He said, if you had asked me for free, I would have told you there's no life there. 
You don't you didn't need to spend millions upon millions upon millions of dollars trying to find out whether there's life on Mars. I would have told you for free because the Bible tells me there's no life anywhere else for free. But that's how man is. He thinks he just because he discovers something, he thinks that he is you know big enough to question the bigness of God and the greatness of God. But the scriptures is so clear. He is called the ancient of days. The other day I was just reading a portion of scripture. I just forget which place it is. I think it was the Psalms where one phrase just struck me. I was just reading the scripture and I, one, it says, God lives in eternity. <laughs> That's his address. You want to know what's the address of God? Eternity. There's no time limit, no time frame to God. That's why he's called the ancient of days. Hallelujah. There's nothing that slips his scrutiny. There's nothing that gets him surprised which happens on this earth. When he looks at something, he's not going to say, Oh my God, I didn't know man could do this. Let me sit and think of something now. No, nothing surprises him. Hallelujah. He is in complete charge over everything that happens on this earth. Hallelujah. He is called the ancient of days. He lives in eternity. Now his garment was white as snow. Purity. And the hair of his head like pure wool. Okay. And his throne was like a fiery flame. And his wheels as burning fire. Now, I just want you to make a note here before we look into what this is denoting. Because it's describing the one who we are living for today on this earth. Hallelujah. So it's necessary for us to learn about him. But before that, I just want to tell you something. Because I took you to the book of Revelation. John in Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5. Gives us the number of 24 as being elders. Why does he do it? And why doesn't Daniel speak about it? There is something you must note. John was talking to the church. Whereas Daniel did not have revelation of the church. Please mark this down very very carefully. Daniel was an Old Testament prophet. He had no revelation of the church. And because his subject did not include the church and its future, he does not talk about the 24 elders. So in a sense, it was wisdom that was kept away from Daniel. Garment was white as snow, talks of holiness, righteousness. Hair of his head like pure wool speaks of Wisdom. His throne was like the fiery flame. Speaks of judgment. And resistless energy. And restless power. Resistless energy, restless power. You heard a testimony about it this morning. The more I keep reading the word, the more fatigue leaves me. Hallelujah. Not surprising. Look at Psalm 119. The psalmist says, quicken me in accordance with your word. What's quicken? The word quicken means make me alive. I've had to pray that prayer sometimes when I come for the evening service on Sunday evening. I'm so tired. You don't know what it is when you minister. It's one thing to do a job. It's another thing when you stand to minister. Spiritually, people are taking from you. And energy is being... Leaving your body. It keeps going out. It moves out of you. So it leaves you drained. And sometimes I've had to ask and pray that prayer. Lord, quicken me in accordance with your word. Sometimes I'll come here and sit. I'll be very tired. And then when I come and stand here, it looks like all of a sudden when I open my mouth to speak, the tiredness leaves. And I sense the power of God filling me. That's what it's talking about. Resistless energy. 
and restless power. It's not restlessness. <laughs> That's a different spirit altogether. You can't sit in one place. I'm speaking about it and I'm going to continue speaking about it. I'm so happy we're talking about the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 The next day, Sunday, after that, Monday, gone to visit somebody. The person said they were having some problem. And soon as I laid hands and prayed, I just started the prayer. Demons started leaving. Manifestations of demons leaving was so clear. Thank God we are studying about the wonderful name of Jesus. It will work all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like that. The cause was demons. But the symptom was something else. And that's the reason why we need to be very, very careful, alert, spiritually alert to live holy lives. Now coming back to the word, here we find the hair of his head like pure wool. Speaking of wisdom, his wheels as burning fire and his throne as a fiery flame, talking about judgment. Now, we are going to see a little bit of how we arrive at these conclusions. Is it just somebody's opinion? No. Scripture must be understood by Scripture. That is the basic law of interpretation. You can write it down. These are some things you can get free from Christ's chapel. You don't need to go and spend long hours in Bible school trying to find out what is the right way to interpret Scripture. I'll give it to you free. Scripture is interpreted by Scripture. In other words, you let Scripture talk for itself. You don't need to add something to it. You don't need to read meaning into the lines. Let Scripture speak for itself. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 13. Now let's read from verse 4. And I looked and behold a whirlwind came out of the north. Why north? Because north is the place where the Lord lives. Amen. If you don't know, you must search scripture. That's your homework. <laughs> behold a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself. Not unfolding. Enfolding. And a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof as the color of amber. Out of the midst of the fire. Now Ezekiel is going to look at some strange looking creatures. Now let's move a little down to verse 13. And the likeness of the living creatures. Their appearance was like burning coals of fire. And like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures. The fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Mark that down. So fast. Now this is the closest Ezekiel could picture. Flash of lightning. Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a beryl. And they had four, then they four had one likeness. And the appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides. And they turned not when they went. That means they could move any direction, in any direction. They didn't need to turn. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful. And their rings were full of eyes round about them four. That means they are built with eyes. They can see. Nobody can approach God just like that. So if we, are, if, we at least, if we at all come into his presence, when we say, Father, in Jesus' name, it's a miracle. How many of you believe what I'm saying? Amen. If you can say, I stood in the presence of God today, it's a miracle. Because nobody just enters into his presence just like that. He is that big and he is that mighty. Hallelujah. 
Let's have that kind of joy in our hearts. And pride, holy pride for the God whom we serve. He is not an ordinary God. He is not the creation of a man's hands. He is not the imaginations of a man's hands that's projected onto wood and stone. He is almighty. Hallelujah. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go. That means they were in unity with the spirit. And the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went. When those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. It's talking about an unusual creature. Living creatures who dwell around the Godhead. They are like what you can call personal bodyguards. They go where God goes. But they have specific work. Their work is to cry out wherever God goes. Holy, 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 holy. Just imagine. For our mind, 24 hours, if somebody is crying holy and nothing else, no distractions. Just imagine how holy that place will be. That's why the scripture tells us, no man has ever gone into the presence of the Father and seen him as it. But if there's one way we can enter into his presence, it's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 24 hours, they're crying only that one word. Holy, holy, holy. Wherever God goes, holy. That means when he comes into a place, like I was sharing the other day during the dedication service, when he comes into a place, that place cannot be the same. Don't expect to have the same lifestyle of the world when you say God is in my house. If they can't make out the difference, then God is not Lord of your lives. You're just speaking and saying he's Lord. You're just trying to go through the motions of religion. But if he is Lord, there will be a change. And that change will be perceptible. Hallelujah. It's not a change for bad. It's a change for good. Life will be present there. There won't be darkness. There won't be death. Life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now come back with me to Daniel chapter 7 please. And let me read verse 10 out. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand. Thousands ministered unto him and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him the judgment was set and the books were opened what is this judgment talking about please write it down or make a note this is not talking about the great white throne judgment which occurs after the thousand year reign of Christ it's not talking about that this is talking about something that will happen before it. It is the setting for the judgment of the great tribulation that will herald the return of Christ to establish his thousand year kingdom here upon earth. That is why you find the Bible is talking about thousand, thousands ministering unto him. Mark that phrase down. What is ministry? It's unto him. Hallelujah. If you're doing it to please the pastor, please, you're wasting your time. Pastor can't repay you. Amen. Pastor can't repay you. Loud up. Amen, please. The elders can't repay you. Nobody can repay you. You ministering unto him. Hallelujah. He is the Lord of all. So there are thousands, thousands ministering unto him. It's unnumberable people. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. That means people from all nations, tribes, peoples will be there. They will be part of the church. Amen. Praise God. Let's read Revelation chapter 5 verses 11 to 14 to get a little bit more understanding. Thank you. Verses 11 to 14. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels 
round about the throne and the beast now this is not talking about the antichrist okay it's talking about those strange creatures that we have already seen in ezekiel and the elders and the number of them was 10000 times 10000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power riches not poverty wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing not cursing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard i saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever the four b said amen the four and 20 elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever that means nobody is there in heaven trying to impress somebody all are caught up with one person the worship is so mag- ma- majestic uh, majestic sorry so majestic so good and so rich that the four creatures say amen immediately because there's nothing unclean happening there if it's if there's uncleanness it will be dealt with there's no uncleanness there when this worship is going on hallelujah how many of you are happy that you will be a part of that worship some day amen. Amen. amen amen let's shout here itself so we'll be prepared for that day amen, amen. hallelujah praise god don't be ashamed to shout hallelujah don't be ashamed to shout praise the lord the lord is in charge of our lives we are preparing for that great day and we are seeing a prelude to what is going to happen some day in this place in revelation chapter 5 Now come back to verse 11 please i beheld then because the voice of the great words which the horn spake i beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame now while god is setting the judgment scene in heaven and he is trying to determine who's going to enter heaven on from on earth the little horn is blaspheming and boasting the loudest that means there will be a time of great uncleanness it will be the peak of uncleanness because as daniel is listening to what is happening in heaven and viewing what's happening in heaven suddenly the vision shifts and he is looking at what's happening on the earth simultaneously he is seeing something the little horn the voice of the great words which the little horn spoke let's read what the little horn will do revelation 13 5 and 6 please Now you will find Daniel the book of Daniel is so related to the book of Revelation in many bible institutes while they're teaching on the prophets they make a division in the prophets you can write it down some prophets are called minor prophets some prophets are called major prophets the reason minor and major are given is not to show the level of importance but to show the content of their prophecy please write this down when you look at amos and you think oh he's a minor prophet don't think that you can leave off the book of amos no it has to do with the content of his prophecy rather than importance in the sight of god it is only a division that you will find sometimes you will read books and you will find it written hosea is a minor prophet or amos is a minor prophet don't understand minor in the sense of importance i've seen people do it they've never read the book of amos all their life they've never read the book of hosea they've never read the book of habakkuk where is the most important statement about how a man will live the just shall live by faith is found in the book of habakkuk 
Amen. All our Christian standing today is based on that one statement from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4. So, the minor and major division is more in the level of content of the prophecy rather than importance. And they say that there are three major prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Some people include Daniel. Some don't include Daniel. They call him an apocalyptic prophet. Write this down please. Don't let that also disturb you. Some say four major prophets. If I'm not mistaken, 13 minor prophets. Some say no, three major prophets only. Daniel. So when you read them, you will find that they are interrelated. Even the ten or the thousands of ten thousands ministering before the Lord. All this is mentioned there. Now, let's read Revelation chapter 13, please. Verses 5 and 6. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 42 months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Mark that down. He is blaspheming the little horn, the antichrist. He is so filled with uncleanness. In fact, Lucifer will inhabit him. Not just some few demons. Lucifer himself will inhabit the antichrist. He will be so possessed that nations will come into his grip. And what he will do is, he will open his mouth to blasphemy God, his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. Four things. However, Daniel chapter 7 verse 11 says, his judgment is fixed and his kingdom is doomed. Hallelujah. It says that, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. What is that talking about? The end of the Antichrist, as far as the scripture tells us, is very clear. He, along with the false prophet, will be the first ones to be thrown into the lake of burning fire. They will be the first fellows to enter there. Now, this appearance of the little horn will be shortly before the coming of Christ. Because Christ is going to come to judge the earth and the individuals who will be living on this earth during that time. Remember, even though there will be many wars that will be fought, and there will be so much of unrest in the lands, lands, or nations of this earth. Before Christ comes, there will be no war that will totally destroy every man. Amen. Don't ever sit and listen to the fourth world war story or the third world war story and think, my God, this nuclear weapons, they're going to, you know, destroy everything and everybody. No, they won't. They won't. It doesn't matter how much of saber rattling they do and how much of you know pulling away the ambassadors from nations take place. God's planning and timing is perfect. Hallelujah. And the Bible doesn't tell us this earth or this world is going to be destroyed by big, uh, one big war. So listen very carefully. This appearance of this little horn lasts for 42 months. That's roughly... Three and a half years. Three and a half years of the seven year great tribulation period. So in fact the last three and a half years 
is considered by many to be called the great tribulation period. Why is it a great tribulation period? Because when somebody mocks God on a large scale, it's going to affect people. Even the religious people will start getting affected. Because even religious people have some fear for some God in their hearts. Amen. Praise God. Religious people have some fear for some God in their hearts. And when there is a total breaking down of law. And when there is a total breaking down of morality. And this man, human being begins to blasphemy God. Blasphemy his name. Blasphemy his tabernacle. Blasphemy the ones who have gone to heaven. It's going to be painful for many on this earth. Now let's read on. Daniel chapter 7. Verse 12. Verse 12. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. What is it talking about? It's talking about, we already read about three beasts that will be uprooted by the little horn. Now, although their dominion is taken away, their lives will continue for some time. The time frame is given there. For a season and time. It's referring to the ideology and the philosophy of these kingdoms. The life. Ideology. Philosophies. What they believe in. They will live on and they will manifest itself during this time in the great tribulation period. Now verse 13. I saw in the night visions be, and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right there we are seeing the clear distinction in the Godhead. The persons of the Godhead or the personalities of the Godhead is mentioned there. It must have shaken Daniel because we are going to see a little later. Daniel's had enough of it. <laughs> it's terrible because a man who believes in one God, when, you begin to, when, when he begins to see the various expressions of the personalities of the Godhead and he doesn't know it in his time or doesn't have revelation of it, it's going to worry him tremendously. Now look very carefully. I saw in the night visions again, plural. One like the Son of Man, who is it talking about? Jesus. Came with the clouds of heaven. It's talking about how the word and the spirit are always in unity. Cloud is representing the glory of God. The Holy Spirit. Okay. So they are one. And they came to the ancient of days. And they brought him near before him. Now. The son of man is invested with something. We see it in verse 14. But before we read that, we are going to see Jesus referred to this passage in the Gospels when he was under an oath at his trial before the Sanhedrin. Yes or no? Amen. He did it. Mark 14, he referred to this passage. Mark 14 verses 61 and 62. Under oath. Jesus spoke it. And Jesus said, I am. I doubt the Christ, the Son of the Blessed was the question. He didn't say no. Jesus said, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power 
and coming in the clouds of heaven. When the high priest heard that he rent his clothes and said, What need we any further witnesses? They thought he was blaspheming. Is that blaspheming? He was just referring to what Daniel had already prophesied. That means even under great stress, Jesus did not speak anything but the word. Hallelujah. He didn't just sit and throw off his mouth. Lord, let me just die anytime. You know, why all this problem? Let him let them get it over quickly. No. He said the Son of Man has power to lay down his life to take it back again. Hallelujah. He expects the same of us also. Don't buckle under small pressures. Don't see small pressures in life and you know, throw up your hands and say, My God, it's far better to die. It's far better not to die. It is far excellent to live if you ask me. Hallelujah. Somebody wants to, the other day said, People long to become martyrs. Why? Right? Because it's easy. <laughs> They'll kill you and it's all over. It's far, far more demanding to live the Christian life than to die. When somebody asks you who'll, who's ready to become a martyr for Jesus, don't immediately sit and raise up your hands there. Say, no brother, it's far harder to live for Jesus. Hallelujah. If I am to die as a martyr, well, let the Lord decide on that. And I'm not going to sit and you know, raise up my hands in a meeting just to show people how many of you will die to be martyrs. You talk to them about death to self and they can't die to that. Tell them to come early to church. They can't come early to church. But you ask them, raise up your hand whether you'll become a martyr and immediately you'll see all the people. They're doing it to impress the other person. They're ready to die as martyrs. Stop playing games with your life. L listen to what I read the other day. It's all the other day. <laughs> what stops a traveler on the desert is not the scorching sun, nor is it the fatigue that grips his limbs because he is losing water. It's not that that stops a traveler on the desert, but a tiny particle of sand that gets caught in his shoe. That's what stops the traveler in the desert. Because it's irritating. It keeps irritating and irritating. Don't look at small problems in life and break down. Don't immediately say, my God, my, my end has come. No, your end has not come. Thank God for it. Hallelujah. No circumstance can determine your end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. I have met some circumstances in my life. I have thought it's the end, finished. No hope. That's it. That's the end of me. But every time I come to that place, I have lifted up my voice and said, you are the Alpha and you are the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. I didn't know Greek at that time. I didn't even know what that meant. You're the beginning, you're the ending, you're the first, you're the last. You're, you'll have the first say about my life, you'll have the last say about my life. Not this circumstance, 24 hours later, the whole situation has changed. Hallelujah. Do it. Do it. Then you'll have a testimony to give also. Hallelujah. So here you see Jesus in Mark's Gospel, chapter 14, 61 and 62. He is under oath and he speaks the word there also. Then... In Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 32, we see the angel prophesying at the time of Jesus' birth. Luke 1, 32. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. Hallelujah. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Hallelujah. In other words, Jesus who is considered here as the son of man is the same person that we read of in Nebuchadnezzar's dream where he saw a stone cut out without hands. Who will establish his kingdom here upon the earth. Hallelujah. Let's read just one scripture before we close this morning. Psalm 2 verse 7. Why is glory, honor, everything ascribed to him? Psalm 2 
Verse 7, please. I will declare the decree that the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Acts chapter 13 verse 33 tells us, He was begotten from the dead. In other words, begotten is ta not talking about him being born into this world. It's talking about him being got back from the dead and a title of sonship given to him. He is the firstborn from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not referring to his birth into this earth. Because Jesus already existed before that. Sometimes people, that's one of the wrong cultic beliefs. That Jesus came into this world and that's how he became Jesus. No, the Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 1, 1, 2, 3. So clear. So the begotten, what we see the psalmist being inspired to speak about. Thou art my son. This day, circle the word, this day is talking about resurrection morn. Not the day of his birth. The reference to that is found in Acts chapter 13, verse 33. Hallelujah. That will close for this morning. We will continue next Saturday again from verse 14 onwards and we will see what the Lord is going to have as he comes to judge this earth. Hallelujah. It's nice to be informed of what's going to happen. Amen. It's nice to know what's going to happen. It's nice to know that God doesn't keep us ignorant. He loves us so much that He's sharing things with us that we can know what is going to happen. Remember what Jesus said. Hitherto, or I'm not going to call you servants again because the servant doesn't know what the master does. I'll call you friends and I'll share with you. I'll speak with you. You'll understand what the Father is going to do. Hallelujah. And that's what He's doing. He's showing us from Scripture, from various portions of what is happening. So, we begin to see the entire jigsaw puzzle falling into place. And what is most underlined is we are at the end time in which Christ's coming is very, very close. Hallelujah. That's why when you hear preachers talk about it, be aware of what is going to happen. And this morning we'll be praying for our newsletters that have arrived for the month of February. I'm writing about you being created for signs and wonders. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you something also. Please listen very carefully. I'll share this again tomorrow in the church. When you talk about signs and wonders, don't crave for signs and wonders that don't have any precedent in the Bible. Please. Don't crave for it. Don't open yourself up for deception. As a pastor, it's my duty to feed my flock. Amen. Lord, Amen. I believe in my responsibility. Don't crave for a sign and a wonder that exceeds scripture. I'll give you an example. Because it's an example that is today current. You may not know of it. The example is of people receiving gold fillings in their teeth and Platinum fillings in their teeth. Gold is converted into platinum in their mouth. That's one of the examples I'm giving you. The next example is gold dust falling on people's head. It's all happening in meetings, so-called meetings, where the power of God is claimed to be present. Don't crave and open yourself up to deception. Amen. Please, don't crave and open yourself up to signs and wonders that don't have a precedent in the word of God. When you talk about signs and wonders, find out whether the Bible talks about it. 
this may sound like new to you i remember all that i stand here in christ chapel i am very very aware of what's happening all around the world i know what's happening and i know it's not scriptural and i know that there are people who later recant please listen this also you must know who later recant and say we said that to impress people actually our fillings were done by dentist so and so 10 years ago so don't go by just what you see remember what jesus said jesus said you will know the fruit by or you will know the tree by the fruit it bears not by the gifts amen don't let this become a damper to you about signs and wonders signs and wonders are genuine hallelujah signs and wonders are from the lord but remember when they happen there will be the counterfeit that will take place to turn the hearts of people away from god who said it jesus said it he said in the last days it will happen the very elect he didn't talk about the unbelievers the unbelievers already are living in a kind of living hell if you ask me the very elect's heart will be turned away because of the signs and the wonders that will happen don't let an inner unruly craving for material things that is in us all of us get the better of you when you see these signs and wonders happen god is not a master dentist putting gold fillings and changing gold fillings into platinum fillings i mean any fool will know what this is but this is what people gullible people are believing in big meetings and they are ascribing it to being of the spirit of god god doesn't do foolish things how I many of you know what i'm talking about better say amen please or else find another church because i'm not going to be sitting and teaching gold dust falls from heaven nor am i going to say gold fillings come from heaven god is not in the business of doing gold fillings if he wants he'll give you a new tooth amen he is that big he knows how to do it if he can give a man a new heart don't tell me he can't produce a new tooth that he will do he can do but if you talk about fillings my friends he is just filling what was already rotten that's why i don't believe in it my god is a holy god hallelujah and you better believe this because it's catching all over on the internet it's everywhere and people are believing it and people who are opening up to signs and wonders now are climbing up they're getting frightened what are what are people talking what are they claiming let's not do it in this end days end days god's believing that we will manifest his glory to a world that has not known the real power of god hallelujah be open to the power of god remember you're made for signs and wonders hallelujah you can have the miracles happen but it'll happen god's way no shortcuts no shortcuts to prosperity no shortcuts to holiness no shortcuts to righteousness nothing it happens god's way and god chooses to do it he will do it all the way hallelujah praise god